Witness and compares these sorts of depositions to the river bed, which must remain in place for the river of language to flow smooth at and another. He compares them, them to the hinges of a pocket, which must remain fixed for the river of language to serve any purpose. The key that the key then is not to gain certain knowledge of repetitions like here is a hand, but rather to recognize that these sorts of repetitions lie beyond notions of knowledge or time. Pramana relates to validity of knowledge in interviews as to whether knowledge is itself valid or requires some extraneous source of sources to validate itself. Its two forms are strong Pramana and Parat Pramana. is the theory which maintains that knowledge becomes validated only when extraneous source validates it. Swarthamarkvat is the theory of self-validity of knowledge advocated by Vimansa. Uh, the chance defined knowledge as means that the nature of knowledge is to be self-revealing as well as object revealing. This very nature may be compared with a lamp. A lamp-like knowledge, knowledge reveals this object by virtue of revealing itself. According to the Jains, knowledge is divided into two points. Remark or means of knowledge proper and near or partial knowledge. As we are not omniscient, omniscient, so it is not possible for ordinary people to know all the qualities of it. For what they know is relative and limited. For this reason, our intention to explain the meaning of man in order to achieve the nature of valid knowledge. According to Jan, everything possesses an infinite number of qualities. When we affirm a thing by one of these manifold, manifold qualities, we apprehend them. But when we know a thing in different ways by different qualities, the knowledge comes through Brahma. Thus both Brahma and man are essential for value knowledge of a thing. There is no judgment which is completely true and completely false, according to Jan. According to Santi Yoga, knowledge is not only self-valid but invalid also in intrinsic in knowledge. In this sense, both Jnana and Agyan are inherent. Agyan is not, is, is not in the sense of negation of knowledge, but it is confused knowledge with regard to two non-discrimination between two different things. In this respect, Sankhya view is, is quite different from the view of Nyayams, as well as Buddhist for depending on extraneous relation. According to Advan Vedanta, the word Gyan is used to mean both knowledge, absolute knowledge and relative knowledge. The absolute knowledge means transcendental knowledge and knowledge of God, which has no relation with empirical objects, whereas an empirical knowledge is the creation of Maya. The former knowledge is called Brahma Gyan and the latter knowledge is called empirical knowledge. Witness and says that the proposition such as my body seems to be known immediately at the time when it arises and we do not feel the need to verify it by successful activity. So finally we can say that witness and thoughts seem to be closer to the Indian form of life which has been left and unexplored so far. And plus I want to, I want to say that the case of self-evident truth such as mentioned above has not only been the point of debate among Indian epistemologists, but also between contemporary Western philosophers. Between science views is enlightened. Various stories of Brahma are in India. Thanks a lot, uh, Vandana. Thanks for dedicating some time. Now I invite Mr. Sathya Kalambek to uh, comment on the Thank you, Chairperson, Madam. Thank you, Vandana Ji, for your lucid presentation. Uh, in your paper, you have an extensive discussion about Pramanabad, Sato Pramanabad and Pramanabad. You have scrutinized all the 
uh, Indian systems, uh, all the major Indian systems in your paper. Uh, and finally, um, you have concluded uh, that the, uh, I would like to read the last line. Wittgenstein's view is enlightening on various theories of Ramanabad in India. This is very um, important line. Um, uh, you have drawn the conclusion. You have drawn the conclusion, and uh, I think um, this type of fusion epistemology, fusion of Western and Indian epistemology, uh, needs to be some cautious steps. Um, if we look at our Indian system, uh, Indian epistemology deals with uh, Indian uh, Indian epistemologist consider all the elements of our cognitive sphere as a piece of knowledge. But uh, in Western counterpart, we can see uh, that only the truth. Only the truth can be a piece of knowledge. There is no such uh, uh, erroneous knowledge which can be seen in Indian traditions. So this is the basic difference we should keep in mind when we uh, try to infuse between Western uh, uh, and Indian tradition. Uh, this is the basic difference. I think uh, um, uh, your paper um, uh, is lacking this point. Uh, and uh, the another important is uh, another important point is uh, the pramanubad, the sato pramanubad and pramanubad due to that reason uh, since Indian epistemologists consider the false knowledge or the aprama uh, they have some apramanubad also sato apramanubad called apramanubad and then the difference between Gopti, Gopti Paksha and the Gopti Paksha. Uh, but in Western counterpart, there is no such of Pramanavad. Uh, and uh, similarly, the Pramanavad, the extensive literature of Pramanavad in Indian philosophy, uh, there is no such parallel discussion, I think. Uh, there, is, uh, there, there, are some li there are some little comments on KK principle, knowing that one knows, but that portion is only uh, similar to, and uh, more akin to the discussion of Gopti Gato Pramanabhado, but Utpotti Gato Pramanabhado, uh, uh, regarding the Utpotti Gato Pramanabhado, there is no counterpart in Western tradition. So, um, uh, I think, uh, we should be more cautious uh, when we try to infuse uh, these two traditions into our epistemological consideration. But that uh, doesn't mean uh, that 